So I'm going to talk a little bit about, I'm not going to uh, cover in great te detail Firefox OS because I, I've, I've been given 10 minutes, but I've been told I can go a little bit longer. So I hope you enjoy the next 73 slides because I will go through them as quick as I can. <laughs> uh, just kidding. It, it won't, it'll go fairly quick. All right. So uh, speaking of Firefox OS, I'm just going to do a little brief overview of Firefox OS. Obviously, it's a new operating system built basically it for, for HTML5 apps. And we share this with PhoneGap in this, in this premise that the, o, the open web should be available to everybody, not just people who are connected with their laptops. It should be connected to the mobile world. And we believe in doing, uh, uh, making that as open as possible for people. And so what we've developed is a, basically an HTML5-based uh, operating system that has a, uh, a Linux kernel, the Android Linux kernel at the low level, but all the apps are written in HTML5, which is just CSS and JavaScript, right? And there are, not only are the system apps written in HTML, but also all user apps. There's virtually no difference. And I'll explain a little bit more about the apps as we go along. But it's all, and every piece of technology that you see today will be based on some, on, on an open web standard or soon to be an open web uh, standard, okay? So that said, what's an app? An app is nothing more to us than just a web app with an additional piece of metadata associated with it in the form of a JSON manif manifest file. And all this manifest file does is basically name your app, who's the developer, where is it located, what are the permissions available to the users, right? If, what APIs do I want to give uh, uh, to, the, to the app itself? And so that's really, essentially, that is the simplest app you can create. Take your web app, wrap it in that. And you, as you'll learn later when we talk about the phone, uh, phone gap integration, if you have a phone gap app today and it doesn't use... Uh, if it doesn't use uh, the device-specific APIs, you can run it on, their, on, on uh, Firefox OS today, and I'll, I'll explain that when I get there. All right, uh, there's three types of apps that we, we, that we provide you can, that, you, that you can build. Well, actually two, but you have hosted apps, which are just web apps that are on your website. We, we provide an install script for them, so you can, people can click on it from their phone and install the app directly to the, to the phone. And we also have uh, uh, privileged apps, which are packaged apps. All the, all the uh, uh, files associated with the app are included in a zip file. It's downloaded to the phone, right? With a packaged app, a privileged app, you can, you can add extra additional privileges, like get, get access to the contacts API. In order to, for your phone to have access to the contacts API, it needs to be that second level. Now, that said, there are ways to get around that, and I'll explain those as we get, go on uh, a little further in the presentation. But then finally, we have certified apps, and currently the only way to be a certified app is to be a partner with Mozilla, and they're the basic uh, uh, core OS-level uh, applications, and I'll show you a couple of examples of those. But the hosted apps, like I said, can live anywhere. You can also put them as a zip file and have them download to the phone. It's important to understand that hosted apps can be anywhere. You can, you can put them, you can create your own marketplace if you want. You can even use the source code that Mozilla created for our marketplace. It's all open source, as well as the entire operating system. If you want to test it, you can build and push it to any device. We have it running on an S4 and, uh, as, as, as a test environment, so things like that. All right? So that said, I just, these screenshots look awful, do they not? Or am I just that blind? Does it look better out there, hopefully? All right, so these are the set of some of the core apps like email, calendar, uh, clocks. Uh, we have an FM radio built into it, and then um, you know some uh, the, the here maps. So you can use its location. We also have a usage monitor to specify you know you should see how much usage you're using on your phone, and then obviously the marketplace, which is built into the OS as well. Uh, we have social and entertainment apps. Right now, our app store, the marketplace has around 1,500 apps. We support. Uh, paid apps, free apps, and in-app payments. So if you want to do in-app payment type stuff. But on the so social side, we have Twitter, Facebook, the standards, right? We also have cute little dogs from Wikipedia. And you have, um, I got a guitar app. I like to play the guitar. Anybody play the guitar? All right, yay. Okay. So uh, your stargazing apps, you know, all them very useful apps, like you want to spend your time with BuzzFeed, things like that. Uh, and obviously, uh, number one downloaded apps are always games, correct? So we have, a, uh, we have all the games that are implemented in, in Firefox OS are HTML5 games. Uh, c currently, we do support WebGL. Uh, we're improving its performance, but most of these, these apps here are almost all uh, Canvas apps. Okay, 
Uh, so that brings me to the next point, uh, web APIs. What web APIs are for, are for us are very similar to Cordova APIs, and I'll, I'll show you uh, several of them. Depending on the type of app you have will depend on what APIs you can use, what's its privilege level. For example, all open apps hosted or whether you put them in a zip file and they download, have access to things like the vibration API. You want to shake the phone. Screen orientation, you want to check to see which way it's rotated. Geolocation, things like that. Network information. We have push notification as well. Uh, Index DB that, that for you know, caching. And that's another thing. There's a misconception that Firefox OS apps only run when you're connected to the internet. That's not true. You can implement the apps using an app cache and they can work offline. Okay, so that we have that capability. That is not a valid concern. So here's an example, and all, all the web APIs are an interface with JavaScript to all the OS level uh, uh, APIs. And in this particular case, for example, the navigator.battery gets me the battery uh, API. And I can add event listeners to no, be notified when the battery's changing power levels, uh, the charging time, things like that. Very simple. In addition to that, all the APIs have success, own success and own failure uh, return calls, so you can uh, do something with that information and diagnose, if something goes wrong, diagnose what, what, why, why it went wrong and what's the problem. Uh, then we have privileged apps. These allow me to do things like use the device storage API. I want to store stuff to the SD card. Um, I, I, I want to use a TPC uh, socket, or I want to add a contact with the API. And then or a cross-domain XHR request, right? So I want to include content in my app from another app, uh, from another domain. You have to be a privileged app in, for, in order for that to happen. Privileged app is nothing more than adding one little field in the, in the manifest and then running it through Mozilla's marketplace. All right, so here's an example of using the contacts API. I just create a Mozilla contact, create the name, and then save it, and it shows up in my contacts list. All right, now, uh, you, with the, if the, in that particular API, if you're not privileged, how do you add a contact? Well, Mozilla also offers as one of its web APIs is a feature called web activities. And what web activities are like, like intents, what they do is they ask functionality from another app. And then the user will then go over to the other app and uh, finish off the transaction. For example, you want to dial a number from your app. You can use a Mozilla activity to dial it, but it won't actually send the call until the user presses send. It'll fill out the information. If they want to add a contact, you use a Mozilla activity. It'll fill out the contact information. Then you hit uh, add. Okay? So, and, and these are the categories of web activities that you can request. For example, dial a number or record some video. Or uh, the, two, the most popular one is probably pick. I want to pick an image. Right? And we had these uh, uh, phones sitting over on the table. And bar none, everybody, the first app they tried was the camera app, right? And everybody wants to share a picture. So the web activity pick allows you to share virtually anything. But not only can web activities ask a feature of another application, they can also say, hey, I will respond to request for this. So say you have a, a new uh, a gallery app. You can say, hey, anybody that wants to pick a picture, advertise me in the list of options that they can choose from. So that's what our web activities do. You got new for mail, SMS messages, and, and contacts. Um, you know, you can, we have the share for sharing. Uh, uh, if you want to share something Bluetooth or something like that, you can use that web activity. Somebody was asking about Bluetooth support earlier. So those are our web activities. Why am I telling you all these APIs? Well, hopefully, I, well, this is an example of the new, uh, you know, the dial uh, web activity. All right, so why am I telling you all these APIs? You'll see when we talk about the uh, Cordova integration, there's, there, there's, a, there's a fairly uh, 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 congruent uh, uh, equality between the uh, Cordova APIs and our APIs. It makes sense, right? We're both trying to achieve the same thing. We want people to have device-level API access from JavaScript and make it easy for web developers to write mobile apps. You shouldn't have to have a PhD to write a good app in a short amount of time. That's the way we feel. Not that most of you probably don't have PhDs. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> All right, so what are we trying to do? We're trying to get Firefox OS in the, in, the, in the platform. You ask me, why is it out of the red box, and why isn't it colored red? Well, first off, it doesn't look good red. The logo looks bad. <laughs> and secondly, because uh, we're not fully there yet. 
We're not, we don't have our integration complete. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we have complete, and then I'm going to solicit any help we can get from you guys that works on PhoneGap apps to come and help us, okay? So what do we have so far? Obviously, these are the uh, uh, Cordova APIs. They're implemented in plugins. Notice how I used the European plug, and I'm from the United States. So I get a point for that, right? All right, so uh, the plugins map the uh, Cordova APIs to device level APIs. Well, that's pretty simple for us because our device level APIs are JavaScript, right? So you go, oh, well, why would you do that? Well, because we want to be a platform inside of PhoneGap. Makes sense. It's a popular platform, and, it, and, it, and, and it, currently we're launching Firefox OS. It's not been up, available that long. So that said, we've done a few, a uh, few device plugins, and I'm going to not go through all of them, but I'm going to show you a couple examples, and then I'll just show you a quick demo of one. All right, so and they, and if I'm using the camera API's get picture method, right, it shows an image. We have to decide on the on Firefox OS side whether we want to map that directly to a web API or a, a web activity. And why do we have to decide that? Do you want to make your app privileged or just be a hosted app? So in, the, in those cases, we're using the least restrictive path. In this case, web activities. So what you get, what that converts to is this, new Mo Mozilla activity pick. And what I'm interested in is only applications that will provide me either a PNG or JPEG. And so what the, the OS returns a list of all the apps that have said, hey, I'll handle those type of apps for you. So you can pick an, pick an image and things like that from the take a picture from the phone gallery, and it lets you be in control of the operation. No longer is the app deciding where it's going to get its images from, right? And it, it creates a better ecosystem in our opinion. All right, so that said, if you have uh, a phone, uh, if you already have, the, we, 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 right now all the codes and in, in repositories, the development repositories, if you want that information, you can tweet me and get my name, and uh, I'll show it at the end, and I'll get you hooked up with the developers. But once it gets in, and a, it's not just Mozilla working on this. Guys from Adobe are working on it as well. So once we get it released, it'll be as simple as Firefox, create your app. I mean, I mean Cordova, create your app or uh, the name of your app, and then you'll add the uh, Firefox platform. You'll then add any device APIs that, you will gonna, that you're going to need. And in this case, I'm just adding the dialogues and the, and the uh, camera device. So let me show you what that looks like real quick. Here is the simulator for um, Firefox OS. All right, so, and this is actually, as you know, Mo Mo Mozilla does releases about every six weeks. So this is what we call our simulator, and it's getting ready to change drastically, uh, supporting full remote de uh, debugging and things like that. It's a very cool new feature, set of features coming for it, and we actually just dropped, it just dropped last week, so it should be available on nightly already. All right, so, uh, this is the simulator, and, and Robert Nyman developed this uh, uh, Firefox OS boilerplate app that shows a lot of the feet, uh, API functions. So if I refresh this, it opens up my simulator, which looks strangely like my phone, and you can do things like pick an image, and then basically I'm going to say cancel on that. But, uh, so these are the different web ap activities, and then the web APIs down here, okay? So, those, so if you want that one, it's on GitHub, it's on the Hacks blog, at Mozilla's Hacks blog, you can find it and, and play with it. All right, so let's go to, back to here. All right, if I'm using the, uh, the commands I just showed you for Cordova, let me go to Finder here. All right, I've already pre-created the app because I, I don't like taking chances, it scares me. All right, so I've, crea <laughs> so I've created this app right here. And all, what I've done is used standard code from, from uh, the examples that were provided in the Cordova documentation, and I added a pick image and, a, and a, a dialog alert. So if I go to platforms, once I run the prepare, Cordova prepare method, and that, well, once I add the platform and then run prepare, I get the Firefox OS platform. That piece is complete. Um, and then inside of that, obviously, I go in here. And what you can see, remember I told you that manifest file? Well, it added it here, right? I'll just use Sublime. All right, so very simple, very compact, not, not much to it, right? So that's all that was really needed 
in addition, if I had used no device-specific APIs, that would, all you, that would be all you got. And in the case, in the case of uh, the conversion of this, there were none used uh, uh, from, a, from a Firefox OS standpoint. So that said, let's go back to here. Here, uh, I can then, I can set up my debug tools the same way, use any of the Firefox de developer tools, but I can add a directory, and all, it do, all I'm going to do is supply the manifest that it, that, uh, that it created, and now i got my Hello uh, Cordova app. Now, if you look here, the, the error is because we don't supply icons currently. That's the, only, that's, the, that's the warning that it's complaining about. So if I refresh that and then go back to my simulator, you can see there's the sample app in the simulator. And, I, and if you want to see this, we've pushed them to all the phones over there, and you can just go take a look. All right, so show alert. Just does an alert on the phone. No big deal, right? And then the get picture, um, the web activity. Hey, I'm presented with the apps that tell me the, the, that support the activity I'm trying to do. I'm going to set a wallpaper, and you get the idea. All right, so uh, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the developer tools, uh, but we, we have a set of posts coming up on Hacks Blog that you want to take a look at that's going to show off what we call the App Manager, and it's a full-fledged development uh, uh, environment for Firefox OS, and you, I think you'll gonna, you're going to love it, but hey, I, I could be wrong. You might hate it. <laughs> All right, so um, lastly, uh, the Marketplace. Like I said, it's open source, but if you're going to develop a packaged app and you need some privileges, you're going to have to submit to Marketplace. And if you do, please let us know, because we want to brag about any app we get in that has uh, some quality. And specifically, uh, our, our product management group is looking for phone gap developers who've tried to uh, run to a, a Firefox OS. We want to know, we want to hear from you, so please contact us. All right, that said... Um, just one of the, we got a lot of uh, uh, re information resources. The Hacks blog, we put a lot of good stuff out that's, that's coming out. Uh, we're going to do a release on, on the App Manager uh, later next week. We're doing a release on the tools today. So take a look at the Hacks blog. And I, I, I write a lot of articles for it as well, as, as well as Robert and Chris, Christian Heilman. All right, there's my Twitter handle. And I took this picture because it said new history. Now, come on. Really? New history? I thought history was history. That's old history. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs>